Manchester United potentially have a midfield crisis right now. Manuel Ugarte is struggling to adapt to life at a new club and Eric Ten Hag doesn't seem to trust him just yet. Kobi Mainu appears to be out of the team for a few weeks with a new injury. Mason Mount is of course still on the sidelines, as usual to be honest, and Casemiro seems to be a player that has fallen out of favour. Combine that with the fact that Bruno Fernandes is out of form at club level, Eric Ten Hag has a bit of a problem in his midfield. However, don't worry too much. Because as usual, when Manchester United have a problem, the solution seems to come from the academy. And this time, is Dan Gore. So who is Dan Gore? Dan Gore is a 20-year-old English central midfielder. He has featured for the Manchester United first team in the past. He's tried a couple of loan moves away to other clubs, but they haven't really worked because of injury. Now he is fit, back playing for the under-21s, and potentially ready to take this opportunity and chance to step into the first team. So where would he play? deep in the midfield. This is an all-action midfielder. Someone that I don't think should be restricted to a specific role. You know, he's not a 6, he's not a 10. For me, he's an 8. Someone that wants to do a little bit of everything, be involved in every single phase. And this includes, in the first phase, in possession. Dan Gore isn't someone that I would label as your first receiver. You know, your midfielder that is always going to be there as that first line. However, I do think he is a player that can aid the build-up because of his technical ability on the ball, his close control, but also his upper body strength. He may not be the biggest player in the world, but he is excellent when his team is facing a man-to-man -man press. He is excellent at dropping into the bit of space here, receiving the ball, and having the, the physical capability to hold off an opponent, keeping the ball for his side, before then looking to turn away from danger. He might look to spin out this way and move the ball forward out here. He might pop the ball back to a teammate. He might carry the ball laterally across the pitch into a bit more room. Either way, what Gore is going to do in these areas is retain the ball. He's going to keep it fairly simple, keep the ball taken for his side. This is a technical player. He's also pretty good with his passing as well. And I think what he has really added to his game over the past few months is a longer range passing ability. And that coming into his game is a huge positive for him as a player because it means as a deeper midfielder, you know, when he does drop into these areas, he has more to his game. He has more to his arsenal, more weapons, more strings to his bow. And I think that is important for this Manchester United team. We know that Christian Eriksen, for example, has been useful in these deeper positions because of his ability to switch to play. Dan Gore looks like he could do something similar. Of course, he's not at that level yet. He's still only 20 years old, but he is adding to his, that to his game. And I think that's important. In terms of what else he does with his passing, a lot of the time Gore is, again, fairly safe, but not boring on the ball. He does have vision. He does have that eye for the forward pass. And when he thinks it's definitely on and he can do it safely and securely, he will find that pass forward through the lines. However, if the opposition choose to cut that off, Gore's not interested in taking the risk. He wants to keep the ball for his team as much as possible. So a lot of the time you will see a sort of simpler passing game. So sometimes big switches out wide, sometimes through the lines when the pass is definitely there, but if not, he's going to play it sideways. And that is what you need at times in midfield. The big thing though for me that Gore brings to this United midfield, if he is given an opportunity, is ball carrying ability and a burst over the first few yards. And this is something that United struggle with quite a lot currently. United lack players that first of all can beat a man. I think Kobe Manu does it well. But we have a lack of players that can carry the ball 10 yards into space or, or find a space because of their ball carrying ability. Dan Gore, for me, addresses a problem here. You can see it here. He's about to receive the ball from out wide into midfield. We are looking at the number eight here, receiving the ball with a beautiful little half turn in the middle of the pitch. He spins away from danger and then carries the ball away. And what I love in these situations is that ability to deal with contact. Again, he's not the biggest player to look at. But physically, he's incredibly strong, really good at using his body, positioning himself between ball and opponent to stop the opposition player getting to the ball. It's really effective and it allows him to carry the ball into these areas. And I think the important thing here in terms of if we're talking about moving into the United first team is where he's carrying the ball. That's what's important here. Take this example. Dan Gore picks the ball up in the middle of the park. He's got a bit of time. Now, what most players would do here is probably play a fairly simple pass out wide towards the right-hand side. But on this occasion, that doesn't seem to really interest the young Englishman because he knows there is a space in this position here. He knows that he's got an opportunity to move into a bit of space in the middle of the pitch. And I think that's something that United need. We often talk about United's wide combinations. The fact that we will move the ball to a winger, we'll try and turn this into a 2v2. We'll move the ball to the right-hand side, we'll try and turn it into a 2v2. What United have lacked, even during the good spells early on in the season, 
is centralised progression. Players that can carry the ball in the middle of the pitch and progress us in these areas. Dan Gore could be the player to address that because of the ability to do things like this. To take players on in the middle. Again, hold off challenges, hold off these bigger opposition players and move forward. And I think centralised progression is something that United are crying out for. Again, here, you can see the space. You can see where he wants to go. And this is what I like about him. He doesn't always have to have the cute touches to, to beat a player. Sometimes he knows that he can't necessarily go through a player or, or past a player as such. Sometimes you've got to go round a player. You've got to go a little bit further with the ball. But fortunately, Gore has the engine to do that. He has the ability to shrug players off go round them, sometimes get under them a little bit as well because of his size, but move the ball into these positions and it's a real determination. It's a real feistiness to his game on the ball. He wants to move the ball into these positions. In terms of once he's in the final third, Gore's not a creative player in my opinion. He has played in the 10 in the past in his career and, and he looks all right, he gets the occasional assist. And if you go through highlight reels, of course you're gonna find positive play where he, he gets goals, he gets assists. But I wouldn't really say that is his game. For me, he is a box-to-box -box midfielder who can contribute in the final third, certainly. Occasionally, he'll find the pass. Generally speaking, I think he's a little bit safe in the final third. I wouldn't say he is really the player to unlock a defence. But United don't necessarily need that right now. We've got Bruno Fernandes there, who hopefully will return to form. We've got Ahmad, who can be creative. Xerxes and Marcus Rashford as well. So I don't think it's too much of a problem. And I think in terms of if we're looking in the short term, he could be a nice little solution for us. If we actually quickly kind of drop Dan Gore into the structural shape that we saw against Aston Villa, again, this starts to make sense. You see, what we saw from United in that game was a 3-2 shape. Early on in the season, Dallow has been inverting. But in this particular game against Villa, Dallow was higher and wider. And it was more the responsibility of a central midfielder to pop up into these positions. And this is where I think Gore's skill set can be quite useful to United. Because he has that ability to drop deep, to get on the ball. He he can be a high volume midfielder at times. He is happy to do that work. You know, the, the tippy tappy work, if you like, in these deeper positions. Just kind of linking the player in these areas. He will keep the ball for his side. He will maintain the tempo. But he's keeping the ball for his team. I think here, sometimes United get a little bit stuck though. United lack that ability to up the speed, to flick the switch and go through the gears and then suddenly motor through the middle of the pitch. Again, Kobe Mainu is probably our player that does it best, but sometimes he actually lacks the, the engine to get away from players. He kind of creates that first bit of space, but then struggles to pull away. Dangor doesn't have that same problem. He has the ability to, to push the ball into open spaces. And again, he, he's got the engine to get there. And I think that change of tempo could be something that is incredibly useful to Manchester United for centralised progression. Wide progression is brilliant. It's great. We are decent in these areas at getting the ball forward. But I think if Eric Ten Hag wants to improve us on the ball, there needs to be this ability to change the tempo in the middle of the park. I'm not sure Ugarte is the player to do it. Dangor could be. And he has an opportunity in the side right now. We spoke right at the start of the video about all the players currently out or, or struggling in a little bit of poor form. We've of course got Bruno Fernandes suspended in the Europa League. I would like to see Dan Gore given an opportunity. Now, I have to be honest, he's not a player that I have always rated the highest. I've always been a little bit uncertain about his potential. I've had question marks over how high he can go in his career. But I tell you what, if you're looking for an opportunity as a young player to finally break into the first team, recently coming back from injury, I think this is the time to do it. And if I was Eric Ten Hag, in the Europa League games coming up, if Kobi Mainu is to be out injured, I would really look towards Dan Gore as someone who could bring something a little bit different, a bit of energy, a bit of ball retention, but it's that burst through the middle, which I think really brings something different to this Manchester United team. So I personally would like to see Dan Gore at some point. I'm not going to say the specific game, perhaps it's the Carabao Cup, for example, but I think he deserves an opportunity. He deserves his chance to make that claim for a first team spot. Will it happen? I don't know. These are, of course, as always, just my thoughts my opinions. Now it's over to you guys. Get in the comments down below. How good is Dan Gore? What do you think his strengths are? What do you think his weaknesses are? Does he address any of the problems that Manchester United currently have? Let me know what you think in the comments. But apart from that, we are finished for today. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.